Hey, 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 how are you all doing today? Super excited to be in your midst on the final day of our disrupt. I mean, <laughs> I call it disrupt. That word is always in my mind. Uh, recruiting challenge event, webinar. Super excited to be here. So how are you all doing today? Being Sunday. How are you all doing today? I hope you're all doing great. So wherever you're joining from, I want you to drop in the comment where you are joining from. Drop in the comment where you're joining from. Let me see. I need to spread the message also, you know. Just got the bad news now. Mm. Okay. Leila, Namibia. Oh, wow. Well, Namibia, how are you? Gladys from Zambia. Well, how are people joining us from other country? Uh, Heli. Time from Dubai. Wow, Dubai. How are you doing? How is Dubai? Iboro from Ilorin. Grace from Cameroon. Niba, how are you doing? So copy the link, subscribe to this channel. Copy the link if you're watching live, hashtag live. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay in the comments. Bay, uh, Leila, that was great. Freezing cold, huh? Namibia is cold. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Keep inviting. Send a link to your team. Everybody has to be here. Veteran from Dubai. Welcome, 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 everyone. Tell us where you are joining from. Drop it in the comments. Copy the link. Share with your team. Let's make today viral. Today is Sunday. So no excuse. Welcome, welcome. Mm. Welcome, everyone. Tell me where you're joining from. NS on Cameroon. How is Cameroon today? I'm also sharing the link. Isabel Benson, UK, Eyes, UK.
Welcome, 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 welcome. So we want to go straight away before we start. Okay, Patrick from France. Promote this, promote, keep promoting, keep promoting. Welcome. Welcome, Aku from Ghana, Frank from Abraka, Glenda from Zambia. We want this, before I bring up our guests, we need to do, copy this link now, share it, let's at least have over 100 people on live. We've been having over 200 people on live, so let's have over 100 people on live if I call up our speaker, they'll be sharing his tea for now. You can you know recruit people into your business. This is someone we've known each other for a very long time. Is my grand grand upline in my business 2007. <laughs> Super excited to have him here. Share some strategies on how you can build your business copy the link you will see share when you are live you will see the button share click on share you get the link to share on your group anywhere you want to share it you share it there so because of time we'll just go straight away can't wait because there are other speakers i know as we go others will be coming up Welcome to day three of our recruiting challenge. The final day of the challenge. We've had amazing experience with great leaders in the industry. And today we have four amazing leaders. We have Dr. John Mokoro. We have SD Ituro Akbama. We have Andre Simbalan. And we have um, David Monitier. The humanity will be coming up before Andre because of his time. So I want to now introduce our first speaker. This is someone who has been in the industry for years, you know, and um, we've worked together in 2007. It was my helpline. I learned so much from him. He has mentored so many to be great leaders in the industry. He's a strategist. That's what I call him. And um, he's an international speaker, an entrepreneur, a trainer, a coach. We are super excited to have him here. Uh, come share experience on how you can recruit people into your business. Ladies and gentlemen, with fire emoji, I want you to welcome Dr. John Bukoro. Welcome, boss. Thank you, Shastambo. <laughs> Thank you, Shastambo. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really want to start by appreciating you for all you do for the industry. I want to really, really, really appreciate you because you're really doing so much. That's why I call you the requirer of Africa network marketing industry. Because <laughs> our people need to know these things. Our people need to, because I always say that the network marketing industry is one where you have, you must embrace the learning, the learning part of it, so that as you continue to progress, the L, the L in the learning 
begins to disappear and it begins to give room for earning. Earning. So it is the learning aspect that you have continuously pushed forward out there for people in respective of the company they, they run with to have this opportunity to learn and learn until they are soaked in the earning part of the business. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you. You're welcome, boss. Welcome. And you have the floor for the next 30 minutes. OK. So very quickly, I want to tell you my story. I was in banking for 10 years. Now, my first, my first um, six, seven months in banking, there was something I noticed. I noticed that uh, my boss, one of my bosses, who was like five years ahead of me in banking, he called me and said it was not end of month yet and that uh, he needed some money for me to give it to him that when, the, when, when it gets to end of month, when salaries are paid, he will give me the money. That was about 50,000 Naira Nigerian money. I'm telling you about something that happened about 14, 15 years back, my first year in the banking industry. Now, although I gave my boss this money, this caught my attention. I was beginning to wonder if this guy is senior to me in the industry with five years and his salary still cannot take him around 30 days, then there's an issue. Then that was when I knew that I needed to do more. I needed to be more in order for me to have more. So I had this craving in my spirit, in my mind, to seek for more. So there was this particular day, Professor Pat Utomi is a well-known name in Nigeria. He came to the banking hall and I ran to him and I said, sir, I want to be like you. I want to be your friend. I want you to mentor me. And that was how he gave me an appointment to come to his house in, Del in Delta State. And on the first day of our meeting, for three hours, he was putting me through the things I needed to do to be able to face life squarely. He introduced me to a book. The book is titled The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. This time, a year before this meeting, we Professor Pato told me I had been given an award as the best dress staff of my particular bank. I was working Fidelity Bank to be precise, Midwest region, and I was reading the same book. But for one year, I didn't read it. And here I was being told about the same book by the honorable professor. Now I went back, I read that book. He told me about personal development. So that was how my journey of personal development started. I continued my banking work. Then I told myself I wanted to go into business to have something doing to add to this banking job. But at the same time, I didn't want a business that was going to distract my banking job, but it was my core source of income then. So that was how I delved into network marketing. So I was doing it at the same time was doing my banking job. I was merging both together because I knew that as a as a as a bank as a network, we didn't need to have an office, we didn't need to have sales girls, we didn't need to have you didn't need to bother yourself with much. So I was doing it then I came from that particular bank. I went to a new bank where I had an experience. So I was 
at this time, when I moved to a new brand, a new bank, I was asked to manage, I, I was given a branch to manage in this new bank. So I remember getting a very huge account. I brought a very huge account to this particular bank. And the bank that was making laws went into profit, made a very huge, it was making huge monthly profit. But I noticed something. My salary remained the same. So I told myself I was going to go fully into the network marketing industry where what you put in is what you get. I needed a platform where what you put in is what you get, not in the banking industry where you work so hard. And even after working so hard, your salary remains the same until, for some reasons, you get promoted. So that's why I told myself that I will be in the banking industry for just 10 years. And in my 10th year, I was going to leave. So I projected that I was going to do this for just 10 years. And I was deliberate, I was intentional about it. And in 2017, I resigned honorably and decided to go fully into network marketing. Now, as a network marketer, the particular company I was partnering with, but for some reasons, some things went wrong. I had a lot of issues. So for some time, I told myself I wasn't going to have anything to do with network marketing again. I told myself that even if I was going to have anything to do with network marketing, it must be a company that has either physical product, most importantly, or a service, a company that is my in the particular country I was I, I, I'm based in a company that has that has done their due diligence with NABDAC, NABDAC is for Nigeria, then FDA for for the different for the different countries, a company that has fully that is fully established in the country of my residence. That a company that has a bank fully. In the, in, in, the, in the country. I told myself that was the company I was going to partner with. I was saying all this based on the experiences I had from the previous company I just partnered with. But even though I made up my mind to do this, it took me a year, six months to finally make up my mind to come back to the industry again. Now, this industry, like I always tell my friends, is the only industry where somebody, for any reason whatsoever, that has crashed and has hit the rock bottom, can rise up again. And that was how I found reason to come back to the industry. And I am in pushing. And I found my feet again just in two years of bouncing back. And I asked, I always ask my friend, what other industry can bounce a man back in just two years? It was a stumble that put this program together. If he tells you his story, you will notice that this was a young man that he, he was broke, he had accidents, 
lost everything, was hospitalized. And in just in less than two years, he came back to limelight using the platform of network marketing. So this is a platform that can bounce you back to life, can make you fully own your life back again, no matter how deep you have plunged down below. So, like I said earlier, I said, it's an industry where you must embrace the learnings. As you embrace the learnings, and continue to learn, you empty your cup to learn, the L in the learning begins to disappear and it begins to give room for earnings. You cannot, you cannot avoid the learning part of, in the, of this industry and expect to earn. So now, the, what we'll be discussing today is recruiting. Recruiting is what we'll be discussing today in the next 15 to 20 minutes. In network marketing, it is the gateway skill. It is the main skill. It is one thing you need to know. Recruiting. You recruit. If you come into this business, you must recruit. After recruiting, you teach those you have recruited to also recruit. Then you teach them to teach those they recruited how, how to recruit. What did I say? I said recruit is the gateway skill, is the main skill. So when you come into the business, you recruit. have recruited to also recruit. Then you teach them again to teach their own people that they have recruited how to also recruit. That is the only way you can build Team. It's not just about having a large team. It's about having a team that is large and at the same time organic. If your team is large for whatever reason and they are not and it's not organic, it's a problem. To be organic means a team that is life. A team that is alive, and the the way to achieve a large organic team is for you to recruit. Now, when I was growing up in this industry, when I was still an infant in this industry, I used to be very excited when I recruit somebody into the business. I used to be very excited when somebody passed his money and gives to me and said, John, take this money. I want to join your business. I used to be very, very excited. But at the level I am now, I tell people that you have not really recruited. You have really not brought somebody into your business if the person you brought in has brought in somebody. The time you fully you can fully say you have recruited is when the person you brought into your business has on his own also brought in somebody. So when you recruit, you must teach the people you are bringing in how to bring in their own persons. It's very important. If you are the, if you're not teaching them how to bring in their own people, if you are the only one doing it, then 
that is not network marketing. It means you are not leveraging. It means you are working too hard. Because if you are not leveraging, you are definitely really working too hard. And you don't have to look for only experts to bring into your business. Because the truth of the matter is this. The person that will break, that will make your team blow up might not necessarily be the big top networker coming to your business. What you can do is this. Anybody you tell about your business, whether the person agrees or not, you can ask the person within 72 hours of meeting the person to expose you to his or her network. Very important. Now, as your business begins to grow, you have to, you have to make sure that your top leaders, you stay very close to them. I also give you some very good formulas. These days, 21st century, you have different kinds of platforms. You have the Facebook, you have the Instagram, you have Twitter, you have LinkedIn, you have different platforms you can use to use to reach the world. Now, when you are on this platform, social media platforms, <laughs> you have to be deliberate and intentional in trying to find people to bring to your business. Now, you find, you can go into social media and say, I want to find people into my business. Deliberate and intentional. That is the reason you want to go there. You're not going there to do this by luck. I want to deliberately find these people. And you go there, you find them, you add them, you message them. When you send a random message to them one-on-one, -on -one, they are those that will definitely respond to you. Then from the list of those responding to you, you can begin to connect. How do you connect? You connect with people by building rapport. What is rapport? Rapport is a place of trust. Rapport is where you find a common ground. <clears throat> you can meet somebody today. You can bump into somebody today and instantly build a rapport with the person. And within minutes, you are already discussing your business with the person. It's possible. I give you an example. I was in Porta Court in um, Swiss, yes, yeah, Swiss Spirit Hotel, yes, went for an event. So I was coming down in a lift, and it was this lady I saw, a large she was wrapped up in her attire, and I was like, I knew that this was going to be a very good prospect. So I greeted her. So we came down together. I was going to take complimentary breakfast. So let me leave God down. I just said, ladies first. Do you understand? And later I said, ladies first. When the lift opened, she came out first. And she said, thank you. I said, you are welcome, madam. I knew what I was doing. I was building rapport already. We got to where we had to take breakfast. And she told them, ah, she didn't, we need some vegetables. She doesn't really want to take this other food. She needs some vegetables. So she was she wanted to shift for me to make my own order. And I said, no. And we also want vegetables. She said, really? I said, yes. Now, even though I met her for the first time that day, some few seconds ago, you could see that we found a common ground. We were both already looking for vegetables together. 
We found the common ground and they brought the vegetables. And because we're already just saying, why waiting for the vegetables? We took our food and we were already sitting on the same table to eat. As we were just I introduced my products. And before you do it, she was already buying. So you can meet somebody and connect by building rapport. And that comes to how do you go about your recruiting? I want to suggest two ways. You can meet, there are people out there who are already known network marketers. They appreciate the industry of network marketing because they have been they have been in it. Those ones, you can meet them and say, this is what I do in my company. My company is a network marketing company. Our competition plan is good. If you come in, you will make lots of money. Those guys that have already been in the industry, that have been part of one company or the other, it's easy for you to, 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 to connect with them and introduce your company directly to them. But those people are, are really very few. The large number you will meet out there are those that have never done network marketing before. And again, there are also those that have probably done network marketing and based on their past experience, they don't want to have anything to do with network marketing ever again. So if you miss those class of people, if you, if, if, if you try to connect with them, telling them about uh, your network marketing company, uh, the you come and join, they will, be, they, they, they will earn money if they introduce one or two persons. They, it's always very difficult for those people to, to listen to you. It's hard. So once you mention your company name and you mention how they will bring one or two persons, they give they build a fence of defense around whatever you are saying. They don't want to listen to you ever, never, ever. So you don't miss so and they are more in numbers. So you don't meet them hitting them with the message of network marketing. What you do, the best way to come in, to meet some people is to meet them with the product, the product you sell. A lot of people don't mention their product. What they mention more is their company names. When you have a lot of products around you, even if that person does not like network marketing, send your product to them. When your product does something for him or her, you will be surprised that they will come back to ask for more. And in the process of asking for more, you cannot let them know that there is also a business path to this. And whether the person is a networker or not, what the person has gotten a testimony from that product, the person is going to drive the business. So don't always don't always move trying to sell company name and the the, the competition plan, I can make money. A lot of people don't want to, to, to hear that. So always be very particular about your products. Very important. Always talk about your product. Your product is the foundation of your business. And there are a lot of people, if for one week, for two weeks, for three weeks, for one month, you have not recruited anybody extra. You tend to think that you are stuck. You are not stuck. 
The fact that you've not brought two or three or four or five persons into your prisons does not, in the last two or three months, does not mean you are stopped. As a member of your company, you can buy products at the wholesale price and sell at the retail price. So don't always track your business by how many people you bring in. If you're not bringing anybody now, buy products for your company at wholesale price and sell at retail price. Your WhatsApp status is there to, for you to always showcase your products and services. Then in the in, in, uh, there's something I want I want I wrote down. I want to I want to read it out, and I want everybody listening to this teaching today to write it down. Write it down because everybody in your team is looking at you. It is what you do that they will do. So I said. In this industry, when you are fully decided to come to this industry, your life has less to do with you. It has, it has more to do now with those in your team and those that cross your path in the course of this journey. And because you let your light shine, you gave these people permission to do the same. So in the course of driving this business, you must deliberately make sure that you are, this, this, this business is able to move you from point A to point B, from point B to point C, because much more than the product, much more than the competition plan, what people outside there want to see, what your team want to see, is how has this thing you have always talked about, how has it moved you from point A to point B, from point B to point C? If they see that there's a transformation in your life, you keep in. If there's one thing in every man, that is the fact that nobody wants to lose out. But they want to sit back and watch and try and see if this whole thing you are talking about, if this thing has even impacted you in your life. They are watching you. Are you focused in this thing you are doing? Or are you one of those jumping from this company to that company, jumping from this one to that one? You are they are watching. Are you a consistent leader? Are you a focused leader? Are you having results? They are watching. So if you're doing it right, they will emulate what you're doing. If you let your light shine, you are giving them permission to do the same thing. Now, is it that easy? It's not 100% rosy all the way. I always tell people that it looks like you are driving towards a bridge and your car gets stuck and you want to push the car across the bridge. Initially, as you are pushing, the weight of the car starts resting back, falling back on you because you're pushing upward. So initially, it's, it, it seems so difficult. It seems so tough. People will talk down on you. Oh, you are very difficult too. You are in network marketing. Oh, this is for people who are jobless. They will talk you down. They will laugh at you. But see, that is the beginning when you are pushing your car up the bridge. If you just continue and don't give up, you get to where you get to the middle of the, of the bridge, where the four tires will be resting on the plane surface 
So at this time, the car is no more tilting backward towards you. You cannot easily push. If you are patient enough to still just continue, you get to the time where your car starts sliding over at the other side. At that level, you don't even need to push again. You don't need to push. The money just starts coming. So I want to encourage you that this is a kind of settlement for your life if you can play in this industry. This industry has no, it's not a risk, has no, it does not grade anybody. Whether you are a tomato seller, whether you are a PhD, a PhD holder, whether you are a professor, whether you, this industry can take you from the gutters, from the bottomless pit, and shoot you to the very top. But you have a role to play. In rounding up, I want to let you know that in all the companies in the world, in the network marketing industry, every single company, they all have the same products for the women, the same product for the men. They all have the same product for the young, the same product for the old. They all have the same product for everybody. They have the same compensation plan for the old and for the young. The same compensation plan for the men and for the women. The same compensation plan for the white and for the black. Now, you might need to wonder if the compensation plan and the products are the same across board for everybody. Why is it that some are rising to becoming directors while some are just there, not growing? The differentiating factor is you. If it is to be, it is up to you. You have a role to play and you must play that role so that we can all meet at the top. Thank you very much. Shastambo, I awesome. 40 minutes. Powerful. <laughs> powerful, 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 powerful. Guys, drop some emojis in the comments. Drop that in the comments. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. I didn't expect less, Doc. That's amazing. Thank you for being who you are and seeing it as a team. Yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, nothing, nothing remaining, guys. You just have to go all in build your business that way and you know the learning is in the doing not just in the watching not in the listening not just hearing at the same time you go back to do what you were doing before so thank you boss thank you very much for your time i know you're a very busy man and you still find that time to be here thank you thank you so guys, our next speaker is here already. I'm super excited to have her in our presence. She's a woman who is imparting the world. She's, she has trained, mentored so many leaders in the profession, quietly doing her stuff. I, I, I'm super excited to have her here because despite how busy as she do is, she still find that time to come share some of the tips that will help you grow in your business. She's a top earner in the network marketing profession and a, a powerful leader. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome Ituro Akbama. Drop those emojis now. Drop it now. Drop it now. Yay. Welcome. Thank you. So nice to be here. How are you? I'm great. I Great to hear in Ghana. I can see. <laughs> I was expecting to see some kente or some, you know, couscous <laughs> in your plate. Great outing you had in Ghana. And yes. Well done. Well done. Yes. So you had the floor. All right. Hi, everyone. So, so good to be here today. 
right so we're going to be talking about recruiting okay so in other words we can call it prospecting it's one of my favorite topics because it is the lifeblood of team building now let me back up a bit just in case we have guests today who are new to our profession so in multi-level marketing we refer to recruiting as you know what we do to bring in new people into the business to bring in new people into the team to introduce new people into being users of our amazing company products now whatever multi-level marketing company you are involved in you realize that there must be a product or a service you're giving in exchange now the process through which you introduce this product or service to another person is the process of recruiting so that's what we're here to talk about today how we can effectively recruit people and you know add new people into our database now my definition of multi-level marketing is that multi-level marketing is my way of allowing myself to be rewarded for brand loyalty now that's an original from itoro akama because you see we all are loyal to brands a lot of us are loyal to brands for diapers for babies you know baby care soap cream even cars i remember last year one of my brothers bought a car and I said, what kind of car did you buy? And he mentioned the brand. And I said, why didn't you buy this other brand? And he said, you know that I'm a this brand person. So I'm being careful not to mention brands, right? You know, and he was like, you know that this is my brand. And then I cast my mind back as far back as 20 years ago. That has always been the brand of cars he buys. He only just keeps upgrading the models, you know, or the, the versions, but it's always that company. He just feels more comfortable with that company. The company does not know him. They have never even done a free servicing for him because he's a brand loyalist. However, in multi-level marketing, you get to enjoy brand loyalty. So today we want to talk about new ways to get people to enjoy this brand loyalty and get paid for enjoying brand loyalty. All right, so first of all, I'm going to start by talking about you. Maybe I should say me, right? Now, as a multi-level marketing professional, you want to collect friends on a daily basis. You want to expand your friendship um, pool, not only because you want to recruit them immediately, but because you want to broaden your horizon. Because you see, our business is a business of people. So the more people we have, the more outreach we have. So if you have 10 friends, right, and five of them decide to introduce you to their circle, that's large. But imagine if you have 100 friends and 50 of them decide to open up their circle of influence to you. So you find that the more friends you have, the wider your circle of influence the higher the probability of the people you can present your business to. And so no matter how little the percentage is, for example, if you have a conversion rate of two out of 10, so by conversion rate, I mean, assuming you have noticed that out of every 10 presentations you do, only two get to sign up or an average, maybe some days two out of 10, other days four out of 10, so by the time you get an average, you're probably having three out of 10 or you're doing great. You're having seven out of 10. That probability will increase as the percentage of friends you have increases. So the first thing I want to say today is as a multi-level marketer, we have to deliberately collect friends and increase our pool of friends. Now, when I say collect friends, it doesn't mean you're going to um, sign them up immediately. So don't throw them off if they don't join your business in one year or in one month. Just be a friendly person. Be a friendly person. Now, let me tell you a funny story. Someone is rushing for a meeting. And then they get to a junction. And you know how motorists can have road rage sometimes. 
and this one wants to pass, the other wants to pass, they start a verbal exchange, and then they go their way. And a few minutes later, this person arrives at the place he's going and calls the person, oh, I'm at your office. I am ready to see you. And the person says, oh, give me a minute. I was held up on the way, so I just arrived. Let me quickly settle into my desk and then sort out a few things with my assistant so my desk will be free and, I, and we can talk. And so this person waits in the waiting room for another 10 minutes and is ushered in. Your guess is as good as mine. It was the two people quarreling at the junction a few minutes earlier. Now, how embarrassed do you think they both will be to realize that they just had an altercation because they were both rushing to meet each other? You know, they had not met each other before now. They had only been speaking on the phone. Now, I can imagine how embarrassed they would be, but I think the person who would be more embarrassed is the multi-level marketing professional who was going to make a presentation to this guy on behalf of his team members. So imagine that you are a leader and your team member has said to you, please, I need you to speak to this person. This person is a very influential member of society. I need this person in my team because this person is very powerful and influential. And then you go there embarrassed because you just had an altercation with the person but if you had decided to live a friendly life right to be a more accommodating person on a day-to-day -day basis to be kind for no reason you would not have had that altercation rather that man would have been indebted to you in quotes because you were nice to him you gave him the right of way even when it wasn't his right and so when he meets you in the office, imagine the friendliness. He will immediately be so enthralled that, oh, you were the one I just met at so-and-so junction. Oh, and you were such a kind person. Please sit. So already you guys would have had rapport, even though it wasn't intended for the presentation. Dr. John Mukoro spoke at length about developing rapport. Thank you, Dr. John Mukoro, if you're still listening. Thank you so very much. That was awesome. That was so good. Thank you for that talk on rapport. It is so important. So we deliberately build rapport and then we allow ourselves build rapport even when it's not deliberate. So if you have decided to be a network marketing professional, one thing you also need to decide is to be a nice person, is to be a kind person, is to be a friendly person, is to be an approachable person. You don't want to just snub someone and then tomorrow you're doing a presentation to the same person. It will be difficult to erase that bad um, impression and then to bring up a new one. So as a multi-level marketing professional, rule number one from Itora Akwama today on recruiting is you have to improve on your friendly quotient. So we have intelligence quotient, financial quotient, um, emotional quotient, maybe we should have a friendliness quotient. I just thought about that. Maybe we should go develop it and make it a thing. So you have to improve on your friendliness quotient. You also have to improve on your emotional intelligence. Very important because, well, we'll talk about that as we go on. So that's the first thing I want to speak about. The next one is when you want to recruit, whether it is a cold call, a warm market, a hot market. So let me, I'm sure someone has talked about that, but let me back up for those who may not have been in. Your cold market is usually referred to as people you do not know personally. So someone, you just met them, right? Like John Mukoro, Dr. John Mukoro met the lady in the elevator at the hotel on their way to breakfast. That was a cold call, right? It could be a warm market that someone you already know. Um, the person you sit beside in church, the person you met at the hairdresser's salon, the person you met where you went jogging, right? Somebody you met or you usually run into at your barber shop, that's a warm market, someone you already know. And then a hot market is usually referred to as people referred to you by a warm market. So that person you sit beside at the club introduces you to his own warm market. So for you, that's your hot market. So let me make that clearer. 
My name is Itoro. Assuming I know Dr. John Mukoro, you know, maybe we are neighbors. And then I've signed him up into my business. And then he decides to introduce me to Charles Tambu. It means that for Dr. John Mukoro, Charles Tambu, his friend, this is one market. For me, Dr. John is my warm market, but Charles Tambu now is my hot market because he's my warm market, warm market. So two warm markets make one hot market. All right, I'm sure we get that. So you have your cold, your warm, your hot. Now, whether you're doing cold market, hot market, warm market, this rule applies to everybody. You have to find common ground. You have to join yourself to whatever it is that person is going through or doing at that time. It's a good time for you to show interest in what interests that person. So if you were to meet somebody who, wants, who was interested in the transfer market now in the football world, and he's thinking, oh, who's, which team is buying what player? And then you are absolutely not interested. You just say, leave this football thing. Come and make money from MLM. You are likely not going to get that person's attention. But if you were to join in the conversation and say, oh, yeah, so who are they buying? You mean this player costs so much? Why does this player cost so much? Is he so much better than the other player? Oh, last year, how much was offered for him? You get into that mix. Why are you people are yet talking about football and then you talk about the business of football, you could bring in something like, you know, it amazes me how a sport has become such a money spinner, right? Such a business. I mean, decades ago, football was just sports and entertainment exercise. But today it has gone way beyond entertainment. It's now multi-billion dollar business concern. So you could just introduce that. You know, it, it reminds me of how this, my company, has turned the business of or the practice of using toiletries into a multi-billion dollar business. And the person says, how? I'm like, same thing. Just the same way that people enjoyed playing football. And then some managers cashed into it and said, listen, the way these people are enjoying, if we do this and do that, we'll make a business of it and we'll make money. It's the same way my company thought that, you know what? I see how people use soap and toothpaste every day. I see how people use shampoo for their hair. I see how people use diapers for their babies. Can we turn this thing into a business? Let's make people earn for referring. And have you seen how I connected the business of football to the business of network marketing? And I have never thought about it before now. Never, ever. I think I'm going to go to football, right? So I can do a proper comparison between the business of football and then network marketing. But I just said that to show you how when you want to go speak with someone, you should be able to make that person understand exactly what you are up for do you get so that's that's um that's about joining yourself to the chariots or you know making yourself find common ground with that person so the first thing we talked about was being friendly as a lifestyle the second thing we talked about is finding common ground right showing interest in what interests this person and do not take for granted that the person is your sister so they must automatically be interested no whether brother sister hot warm cold market go ahead and make sure you find common ground before you start that conversation all right then the third thing i want to talk about is that you should be genuinely interested in giving value so in the spirit of being genuinely interested in giving value, I want to quickly send this link to someone who just called me. Someone just called me. I had to cut the call. So I want to quickly send um, the link to the person so the person can see where I am and why I could not talk to her. So the third thing I'm speaking about is that you should be genuinely interested 
in giving value. What do I mean by that? You know, it's so easy to say, I want this person to join my business because I want those products to be sold and I want to make money. I want the company to reward me. And that's a good reason. Absolutely nothing wrong in wanting the person to join so that the person can, you know, add to your points. Absolutely nothing wrong in that. However, you should also have as part of your goals and plans a genuine desire to add value to that person's life. It should be on your front burner. Now, assuming, assuming you have a child, your biological child, and your child has an exam to write, maybe a scholarship paper, and you are helping this person to revise, you know, it out. If you do that genuinely and your child actually passes that exam and gets the scholarship, what has happened? You've created value for your child and it has spilled over to you. Because your child probably now has admission into an Ivy League school and it's reducing the money you spend on school fees. Do you understand? So you find that when you adding value to the next person creates even more value for you. So be genuinely interested in helping the next person do well. It's key. And you know what? The people you're talking to can tell. Have you ever spoken with some people and they say, you just want to use me to climb. You just want to use me to grow. I've had an experience like that. The person reached out to me and said, Itoro, you know what? You're doing so well in multi-level marketing. I need you to come and join me in my new company so you can help me grow with your experience. That one was even upfront. And I said to him, oh, actually, I'm still growing in my company, so allow me to keep growing here. I'm not done growing here, so I can't move over here. Some people are not that upfront with you, but secretly, that's what they want. But you need to check, what can my company do for this person? So regardless of how experienced that person is, look for one thing your company can offer. Oh, Ma, I can see that you're so successful in multi-level marketing. But you know, my company will give you X. My company will give you X extra. My company's products will add this extra to you. Always look for something that genuinely adds value to the next person. All right, the next one is you need to learn to listen, guys. You need to learn to listen. Charles, how many minutes do I have? All right, cool. You need to learn to listen. A lot of us come on a presentation and we just want to keep talking. Do you know that you learn more by listening to the person you're speaking with more than talking? When you listen, you can pick the person's pain points or pleasure points. By pain points, I mean maybe you can hear the person say something like, my work is so busy, I don't have time. You can sell the person time freedom, which is one of the things we have in multi-level marketing. Or the person says, oh, I'm working so hard, I'm working three jobs because I have to pay school fees. You can sell the person Financial freedom, which is one of the things we have in multi-level marketing. So listen, that's a pain point. You could also get a pleasure point. It might, the person might say, oh, please, I'm too busy because I'm preparing to travel for summer with my family. That's a pleasure point. This person likes to travel. Does your company have the offers of, you know, travel as an incentive? Sell that pleasure point to that person. And finally, for today, I'm going to say you have to learn to be proud of your company. Now, I know that for some of us, we are doing multi-level marketing just as a way to survive. But my advice would be, learn about your company. Go deep, deep dive. Ask people, ask leaders, go read. I spent a lot of time online researching about the company I work with presently. And I'm super proud of my company. The way I speak about my company, people are like, are you a staff or a distributor? I'm like, I'm a distributor, but I feel that bond with the company because I have read about them, I've visited their headquarters several times, right? And so I know what the company is about. I'm truly proud of my company. Don't just do multi-level marketing because you want a meal on your table. 
do it also because you're proud of your company. So let me quickly rush through what we've been talking about. Number one, collect friends. Learn to lead a more friendly lifestyle. Number two, look for common ground with the person you want to speak with, whether hot, cold, or warm market. Number three, be genuinely interested in giving value. People can tell because value is an energy to give a vibe. People can tell if you are actually coming to give value or just to take from them. Number four, please learn to listen more. Don't just learn what you've learned from your leader and then go and you are interested in pouring out the entire presentation. Listen, because when you listen, you'll get pain points, you'll get pleasure points, and you can sell effectively. And the last one for today, be proud of your company. It will tell in your courage. It will tell in the way you converse to the next person. When you're proud of your company, it shows in your courage. And the person will want to come because they'll be attracted by that courage. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm looking forward to another opportunity. Awesome. Powerful, powerful. Thank you very much, Itora. I found oh, my guys just on fire emoji. If you got so much value, value from this powerful lady, I'm super <laughs> excited to have you here. We are grateful. Yeah, we're for looking the... forward to more. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Good night, everyone. Night. Yeah. Wow. I'm still here. I'm still listening and learning. I'm writing. I was actually yeah. taking down notes when Dr. John was talking. <laughs> well, I'm still That's great. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Next is the power boss. Super excited to have him here. It's truly a privilege. Someone I've been following for so many years who is a mentor a coach, a trainer, an award-winning speaker. Guys, many of you guys know him. You've heard him a lot. And today we are having him here, the CEO, the founder of the Believe Nation. He's a brother, he's a mentor, and I'm so, so, so excited to have him here. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's make welcome one of the legends in network marketing, a disruptor, the Believe Nation master, David Monetier. <laughs> Charles, how are you doing? Yes. I'm great. Awesome, awesome. Can, can you hear me okay? Very clear. All right, all right, good deal. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you for, uh, Thank you for inviting me and, and thank you for that incredible uh, introduction. I think I'll have you travel with me. So every time I need an introduction, you can do it. <laughs> That's great. So you have the floor, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, let me first say thank you to you, uh, Charles, and uh, thank you to all of the other speakers that have, uh, that have given uh, from their hearts and a taunt over the last uh, three days here. Uh, and, and thank you to all the people that are watching. I um, want to say we appreciate your time. Uh, I don't take it lightly anytime I, I, I get a chance to share with people uh, a little bit about uh, some of the experiences that I've had uh, in this industry. And my hope is that uh, something that was said over the last three days or something I may say today uh, can make a huge difference for you, that can keep you going. Uh, keep you in the game, keep you fighting for the financial freedom that you deserve. Uh, I remember getting on, you know, calls like this. You know, I remember going to seminars and wanting success, uh, desiring success, and not really sure how it was going to happen. But I kept showing up. And that's why I'm congratulating each and every one of you that's watching this, because this is what success is. Success is showing up. Success is doing it over and over and over again, even when it looks like it's not working, um, even when it looks like you may never get to the destination that you desire, but you keep showing up and you keep learning and you keep growing. And what you're going to find over time, you're going to get to where it is that you want to go. Every single speaker that you've heard uh, over the last three days, I'm here to tell you that every single last one of us we were exactly where it is that you are right now. You know, I remember starting in this industry 17 years ago when I was living with my father and no money, no bank account. Um, 
every single day was going out, talking five, 10, 15, 20 people a day, you know, showing the plan uh, every single day. I was looking for people to show the plan to uh, every single day. And uh, I remember going to every weekly meeting uh, on Tuesdays, every Saturday training. I never missed a big event. Anything that my upline told me to do, any book they told me to read, I read it. Any audio they told me to listen to, I listened to it. And I struggled and I failed for almost five years, uh, not understanding that failure was really the door that I had to that I had to keep knocking on in order to get on the other side of success. And that's where maybe some of you are right now. You may be in a place right now where you're doing everything your upline is telling you to do, but you're not seeing the physical results. I'm here to tell you that everything you're doing right now, I promise you, you're going to get paid for it. The, the amount of income that I earn today in this industry is not because of the work that I do today. Now, I still work hard. All right. I still work smart, but I get paid for the work that I did 17 years ago, because if I didn't go through that, if I didn't go through those challenges, if I didn't grow, if I didn't develop 17 years ago, 16 years ago, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, a decade ago, then I wouldn't be the leader that I am today. I wouldn't be the person that I am today. And on today. OK, I'm going to share with you uh, what the breakthrough was. OK, what took place, what allowed uh, my business to really, really explode. And my business grew because I grew. I want you to write that down. Your business is going to grow because you grow. Now, your business will multiply when your leaders grow. All right. Your, your business will multiply and grow even faster when you start developing and growing other leaders. That's the key. The key to long-term success and massive success is not just you growing, but it's you creating an environment where other leaders, other, tr other, other uh, uh, team members, they can actually grow. And that's why you know, I celebrate Charles for putting this together because He's, he's not putting this together just for him to grow, right? He's not putting this together just for him to say, hey, I, I put a training together. He's bringing like-minded individuals, people that have been successful in this in industry, bringing them together onto one platform so that you can grow. Because he knows that if you get the information from all these leaders, all these incredible leaders and, and trainers and coaches that you've heard from over the last three days, if you hear from them, Guess what? You may learn something that maybe he hasn't taught you yet, right? And then you can take that information and you can go out there and succeed. So here's here's what happened for me. I I finally understood um, what success really meant. Uh, I listened to this audio called uh, "The Stranger Secret." Okay, uh, Charles, can you still hear me? I want to make sure you can still. You can still hear yeah, me. I can hear you, but your video is off now. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. One second. All right. Awesome. So, sorry about that. I was watching... Yeah. Uh, I was listening to this uh, this audio, and I didn't listen to it one time. I listened to it over and over and over and over. <laughs> I listened to it for years, okay? Um, and that's the thing with information. You can't just listen to information one time. But in this audio, The Stranger's Secret, Earl Nightingale defined, he gave the definition of what success really was. He said the success was the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. All right. The progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So that let me know that success was about growth. Success was about uh, realizing. Right. 
success was about success was a moving target that I would never actually get to success because there was always going to be another level, right? That I could grow to, that I could realize. And I've realized a lot over the last 17 years, and I will continue to realize even more over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. So will you. That's what really what success is all about. So success is not a destination. It's more so a journey. It's a journey of growth. It's a journey of realizing. It's a journey of progressing. All right. And that's why you being on this call today is so powerful and you should be commended because this is success. All right. This is success. Here's another thing that I learned was that success really had two sides. All right. Really had two sides. I'll never forget. I was listening to an audio by Kevin Trudeau. Kevin Trudeau was a, a trainer, teacher on the mind. And it was an audio called The 25 Secrets of Wealth Creation. 25 Secrets of Wealth Creation. And he broke down the four basics to success. The four basics. And I've utilized these four basics over the last, I would say now, 13 years of my life. And it has served me tremendously. I've taught it to countless amount of people around the world and, and it's served them and it's and it's helped them achieve their goals and their dreams. So I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give you these four steps uh, and I'm gonna tell you the two things that you really want to focus in on in order to really grow your business. All right, to have exponential growth in your business. Number one basic, the first basic is you have to decide coming out of this conference, you have to decide who you're going to listen to. Who is the voice? Who is the coach? Who is the mentor? Who is the person that you trust that is in your company, that is in your business, that is winning, that is getting the results in your company, in your business that you're going to listen to? Who is that person? My life changed years ago when I found the person at the time that I was going to listen to. All right. It was someone that I had trusted at the time. It was someone that had the results that I was looking to accomplish at that time. And I decided to follow everything that they said to do. If you want to see where you're going, all I have to see is who you're listening to. Okay. Who, who is now, you know, my faith is, uh, is, is uh, I'm a Christian. So the Holy spirit should be the person you listen to the most. No one should take precedent no mentor or coach should take precedent over what the holy spirit says okay but on the earth in your business you should have someone that you listen to someone that has the results someone that's accomplished what it is that you're looking to accomplish because the quickest way to get to somewhere is to have a guide all right is to have a road map is to have the directions well that's what the mentor has all right. Mentorship is perfect advice from an imperfect, uh, imperfect person. All right. It's perfect advice from an imperfect person because that person has already been down the road that you're looking to go down. The person has already accomplished what it is that you want to accomplish. How simple is success if you decided this is who I'm going to listen to and everything they told you to do, as long as it was not morally incorrect, as long as it didn't hurt anyone else. All right. As long as it didn't violate any of your personal values, you decided I'm going to listen to what they tell me to do. Your life will completely change. All right. It'll, be, it'll completely change because what you're really doing is you're borrowing the belief of that person. You're taking that person's experience. You're taking their belief. You're taking their expertise, their strategies, their how to's. You're taking that. All right. Day one. Instead of having to go through everything that they went through, you can start learning from them right away. You can learn two ways. You can learn through your own experiences or you can learn through the experiences of others. I think it's less painful to, to learn through the experience of others. All right. So number one, ladies and gentlemen, is you've got to decide who you're going to listen to. This is vital. This is critical to your success. Who are you going to listen to? You've got to make that decision. Write that person's name down right now. Say, hey, this is the coach. I'm going to listen to her. Whatever it is she tells me to do, I'm going to do it. See, guys, humility is not a personality trait. 
Humility is recognizing you don't have something. A lot of people fail just at step one because they lack the humility. All right. You, you, and, and it's unfortunate because you think, oh, well, if I listen to this person, they're better than me. No, we're not better than you. We just have the results that you're looking to get. We already have been through what it is that you're, you're going through right now. So we can tell you, hey, don't do that. We can tell you, hey, do it this way. All right. We can tell you, hey, get better at this. All right. We can tweak a little things here and there for you. It's still going to be you. It's still going to have your style. It's still going to have who it is that you are. But now you've got a coach. Now you've got a mentor. You've got a guide. You've got to have that in place, ladies and gentlemen. If you're trying to do this by yourself, listen, Elisha <laughs> needed Elijah. Okay. Joshua needed a Moses. All right. Everyone needs a mentor. All right. Uh, Jim Rome needed Earl Shelf. Uh, Anthony Robbins needed Jim Rome. <laughs> All right. Mentors and coaches that have helped me over the years. Mentors and coaches that I still have a relationship with today. All right. Like Bob Proctor and Ivy Hilliard. Those are the two guys that really taught me. Ivy Hilliard taught me faith. Bob Proctor told me the mind. And then God has put people in my life that have served as examples of what he was going to do in my life. All right. So there's some people right now that may be in your business. They may, may not be a mentor. They may be a coach. They may be an example. Right. Of what God wants to do in your life. So now you can see something physical. One thing I've learned. Is that anytime, anytime God wants to do something in your life, he'll show you someone else who already has it to prove to you that, hey, I can do it for them. I can do it for you. But you've got to know who you're going to listen to. It's very, very critical. Number two is you've got to decide that you're going to be teachable and coachable. you got to decide that you're going to be teachable and coachable. What does that mean, teachable and coachable? Meaning that I'm willing to learn the information, David, but I'm also willing to change. I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to develop. I'm willing to get better. A lot of people are willing to learn. Like you're on this call right now, you're willing to learn. But are you willing to change? Are you really going to go and seek out the person that you're going to listen to? Are you going to change maybe the way you, you've done a three-way call before in the past? Are you willing to change maybe how you did a presentation? Maybe you've learned now how to do an effective presentation. Maybe you've learned, hey, maybe it's not just about belly to belly anymore. Maybe I need to have a social media presence. Are you willing to change? Yeah, you are willing to learn some social media uh, 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 trainings, techniques, but are you willing to pivot? Are you willing to change? That's the only way we know that you're really teachable and coachable. And that goes back to humility. So I'm willing to learn, but more so I'm willing to change. Number three, and this is my, I would say put a star by this one. I call it the success balance scale. The success balance scale. Uh, I focus 99% of my energy on the spiritual side of success. I don't focus so much on the how-tos. The how-tos are important. The strategies are important. Very, very important. And you should learn them. And I'm sure there were many coaches that taught you how to do a three-way call, how to do a presentation, how to prospect. And all those things are very important. I know how to do those things, too. I've been doing it for 17 years. But one thing I've learned is that in order for you to create what it is that you want in the physical You've got to first create it in the spirit. I've learned that the mind, all right, that the body follows the mind, that the mind has to be right, all right? The mentality has to be right. If you look at the word mentality, mentality, if you write it down, mentality, the first word in that word is me. So you as an individual, and the next word is men, you along with other people, so men is plural, mental, the way you think mentality, the great reality of your life. So your mentality is you as an individual, along with the people you surround yourself with, the way that you think, that becomes the reality of your life. So I learned that the mentality of success was way more important than the, the, the natural side of success, the physical side of success. Because my whole focus when I first started in this industry was the how-tos. How do I present? How do I prospect? How do I do this? And how do I recruit? How do I do that? And you focus so much on the how, but guys, if I tell you my testimony, you'll know that it wasn't a how, that it was a why. You'll know that it wasn't a how, but it was God. Because people say, well, David, how did you get here? How did you get to the point where you're earning seven figures a month, sometimes multiple seven figures a month? How did you get here? 
And I tell them it's God. It's a 37 year old question that you're asking me, right? So it's the spiritual side, it's the thoughts, it's the words, it's the images, it's the visualization, it's the imagination, it's writing it down. It's all those things, it's the vision that you've gotta have. It's the thinking, right? All it's the faith, it's the right emotions, it's the love, it's the gratitude. All those things that are spiritual, that is what allows it to show up in the physical. See, this jacket I'm wearing right now, before it became physical, it was in someone's mind. The phone that you're on right now, maybe the laptop that you're on right now, it was first in the spirit before it showed up in the physical. See, you're gonna build it in your mind first, build it on paper, and then you're gonna go out and physically build it. That's why it says, write the vision, make it plain, so who sees it will run. It says, write the vision upon tables. Tables, right? That's what they wrote on back then. And today I tell people to write it down on paper. If you come around my house where I live right now, I have my goals everywhere. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll show, I'll show you. Okay. I've, got, I've, got, I've got my goals, I've got these goals laminated and they're, and they're posted all over my home, okay? I, I do this on purpose because it says, write the vision, make it plain so who sees it will run. You're only gonna run in the direction that you can see. Right. It says write it upon tables. I said write it upon paper. He said tables uh, come from trees. Right. And uh, paper comes from trees, too. So it's important for you to write it down on paper. Don't just have it on your phone. Have it written down on paper. So it's the spiritual side. It's 90 to 99 percent of success. And then the physical side, the how to's, it's one to 10 percent of success. The, the strategies, the techniques, how to present, how to prospect how to promote for events, how to utilize social media, all right? But trust me, guys, my breakthrough happened when I understood the secret. My breakthrough happened when I understood that it was a mentality. And I've taught countless amount of people around the world, even different walks of life, people that I coach and mentor that are not even in the industry of network marketing, have taken this information I'm sharing with you right now and have gone on to become six, seven figure, some even eight figure earners in this industry. So it works. And it works every single time. That's why we created Believe Nation. We wanted to create a platform that was for everybody. It wasn't just for people that were in my company or people that were just in network marketing. Uh, and I don't even charge for it. Don't charge for it whatsoever because my money doesn't come from that. My blessings don't come from that. Okay. Um, and there's nothing wrong with charging for a product that you have or a service that you have. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's just not, that's just not my focus. My focus is to impact a billion people. And I know that the money and the finances will be there uh, anyway. All right. So you've got to understand that part of the four basics. That is the, sci it's the science of getting rich. It's the spirituality of getting rich that matters the most. Now, do you still need the how to's? Do you still need the strategies, the techniques? Absolutely. Do you still need to take action? Yes, because faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. But if you look at the word work, if you look at the definition of the word work, it says that it's the mental or physical effort put in order to achieve a particular goal. Number four basics to success is you got to be patient. You got to be patient with yourself to learn. All right. Because you're going to start out initially, you're going to be unconsciously incompetent. And then you're going to become consciously incompetent where you now realize I don't know. And then you got to become conscious competent when now you're very conscious of what you're doing, right? You're competent in what you're doing, but it's not automatic yet. It's going to be automatic when you're unconsciously competent. And what do I mean by that? Well, remember when you first started driving, at first you were unconsciously incompetent. You knew nothing about nothing when it came to driving. And then you realize, hey, I need to learn how to drive. You now became conscious of the fact that you were incompetent when it came to driving. And then when you first started doing it, right, you had to be patient with yourself. You would get in the car. You were very conscious of what you were doing. You would check your mirror, right? You would check your rear view, your, 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 your side mirror. You put your seat belt on, right? You had two hands on the wheel. You were very conscious of what you were doing. But over time, you became unconsciously competent, where now you get in your car, you don't put your seat belt on. You get in your car, you put your makeup on while you're driving. You're driving with your knee. Right. You're on the phone. You text it. Now you're what? Unconsciously competent. It's the same way in business. It's the same way in success. It's not going to happen overnight. 
You're not going to become a master at this information overnight. Everything you've heard over the last three days, you're not going to become a master at it overnight. It's going to take some time for you to learn, for you to grow, for you to develop. But if you do that over time, you're going to get to the destination of success. And then guess what? There'll be another destination and another destination and another destination. I remember when I first started making some decent income, I said to myself, man, when I get to 30 grand a month, I'm done. I'm moving to Hawaii. I'm retiring. And when I got there, I was like, what's this? This is not this is not enough. So success is a progressive. It is a moving target. So it's about growth. It's about getting better. Let me leave you guys with these two things. And then I'll pass this back over to uh, to Charles. Belief in leadership, ladies and gentlemen. Belief in leadership are the two things you must master to get to the top. Belief and leadership. Belief is three things. Belief is the words that you speak, the images that you look at, and the emotions that you have. Those three things. You've got to master the words that I speak. you got to master the images that you see. And you got to master the emotional state that you're in. The emotional state that you're in needs to be one of love and gratitude. The words that you speak. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am. Whatever that goal is, you speak it. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am. The future is the moment following what I speak or what I write. So every day I'm speaking my future. I'm speaking my future. In the present, I'm showing love and gratitude. That's why I'm on this call right now. It's because of the love and the gratitude that I have for Charles. That's why I, I accepted this invitation. All right. And then the images, that's why I tell you to put the pictures up, put the signs up so you can see where it is that you're going. Write the vision, make it plain so who sees it will run. See, both those of you that maybe you're Christian, Right. If you were born in a Christian home, but the moment you were born, we shipped you off to China and your parents that raised you were Mandarin and maybe they were Buddhist. Guess what? You wouldn't be a Christian. Why? Because the words that you were exposed to would be about Buddhism. The images that you would see would be Buddha and the emotions that you would have uh, uh, actually got would be emotions that you would get from experiences of what it is that you were surrounded, the environment that you were in. So our beliefs are really created for us through what it is that we speak, what it is that we see, and what it is that we feel. And that's why it's so critical for you to understand that. You wanna have your organization's belief grow, speak the right words, put the right images in front of them, and make sure you give them the right experiences so they can have the right emotions of love and gratitude. Now, leadership, I'm gonna give you my top five characteristics when it comes to leadership. Top five, number one, character. Character is toughness. Character is in the face of adversity, I attack it. I don't shy away from it, I go to it, and I take ownership, I take responsibility, character. Two is integrity, my word. Hey listen, I'm gonna be on this call. Hey listen, I'm gonna be at that event. Hey listen, I'm gonna be on this Zoom. Hey listen, I'm gonna be at that, uh, that presentation. You keep your word, your team can count on your word. That's number two. Number three is a positive mental attitude. At all times, you've gotta maintain that. You gotta maintain a positive mental attitude about where it is that you're going. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the back office says. You gotta remain positive about where it is that you're going. You gotta to continue to speak where it is that you wanna go. You gotta to continue to see where it is that you wanna go. And you gotta feel that love and that gratitude even right now. You can't feel frustrated, can't feel angry, can't feel impatient. Those things pull you away from your goals versus moving you towards your goals. Number four is the work ethic. You've got to have strong work ethic if you're going to become a great leader. Work ethic, work ethic, work ethic, work ethic. Work, 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 work. Mental and physical. Put the work in. People are going to follow you because they count on your discipline. Work ethic is discipline. I do it repeatedly over and over again. I find the right way to do it, and I do it repeatedly until I master it. All right? And then number five is you got to have a pleasing personality. All right? got to have a a pleasing personality where you're able to get along with other people. You're able to understand people's personalities. You don't get offended. You don't take things personal. You're able to uh, interact. And big thing, you're able to communicate with all different types of people. No matter where they are in life, you're able to communicate with them and get your message across the right way. Those are the two things you got to master, belief and leadership. If you do that, I promise you, all the goals and dreams that you have, they will definitely come the past for you. So, uh, Charles, I want to say thank you again for uh, 
inviting me on here. Hopefully I was able to share some value uh, with uh, the folks that listen in. And I'm sure this is going to be recorded. Maybe they can go back and listen to it again and, and get more insight and, and be able to apply it in their business. Awesome, boss. Awesome. This was powerful. This is powerful. Thank you very much for sharing this nugget. As usual, we we, are, we always learn from you, and uh, you've been a role model to so many people in the profession. I'm super excited to have you here. Guys, there's a program coming up. Uh, please, can you talk a little about the program so that they can, those who can watch, uh, join virtually, virtually, they can also join because I know there is a virtual aspect of it, right? Since some yeah. of us cannot come to the US. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, we're having the I Believe experience. Um, this is going to be happening July 23rd, 25th over in Orlando, Florida. Uh, but we are, we just released early bird virtual tickets for this event. It is going to be amazing. Three days. You guys just heard me teach for 30 plus minutes here. But this is going to be three days where I'll be diving deep into leadership. I'll be diving deep into the power of belief. And the key thing, ladies and gentlemen, is not just you getting the information, but get the information out to as many people as possible. July 23rd to 25th, I believe it's 197 bucks for the uh, the virtual the virtual stream. Normally it's 397, but right now we've got an early bird. People want to take advantage of that. Uh, I've got another training call to do for France right now. They're going to have thousands of people from France. They'll be on there as well. People in Germany, obviously people in Nigeria, my home country, uh, people in Africa uh, will be on there uh, as well. So go to believenation.events, believenation.events. Uh, it is going to be incredible. It's going to be very clear. It's, it's HD. We've got the best of the best. Um, the Internet's going to be off the chain. You're going to be able to get everything that you need from that event virtually, everything that you need to really take your belief system to a whole nother level. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, is this book, guys, is it on Amazon now? Yes, it is on Amazon uh, right now. It's also, um, uh, it's on Barnes and Noble. It's on believenation.shop. Uh, awesome. It's on there. I'll be coming back to, to Nigeria really soon. So I'll, I'm going to bring a, a bunch of them there as well, but uh, they can go to Barnes and Noble and, and purchase it there. Or actually, they can go to Amazon and purchase okay, it. Okay, because a lot of people in Nigeria already has kids. Some of them are dragging this from me, so this is uh, precious to me. Guys, go get the book. Believe Nation is very important. You know, one one way to learn from the the guru is to follow their footstep. You've heard what I said. Mentors are very key to your business. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, the boss, thank you very much for having you here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next is a lady. <laughs> Someone who is a role model, too, in the profession. And we are super, super excited to have her here. And her husband is a number one top earner in network marketing all over the world, guys. These people are crushing it. They are a veteran in the profession together for over 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, here before us is a super Uber. You know, I, I saw uh, during the uh, business for home event, I saw an uh, energy. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually the first time I had to listen to you. you know, that event. So, Put some fire emoji and make welcome Andre Simbala. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Charles, for this introduction. Yes, you know, we need to work hard because uh, me, and my, uh, uh, me and Igor, we, of course, we make a lot of money, but hey, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to, to money, means 50-50. So, you know, when <laughs> the millions, hey, you need to look because I want two million for myself. So we need to make more, four millions. <laughs> So I, uh, I'm Andrea Cimbala. I am Italian. I'm living in the Netherlands. Thank you, David Dimonite, for your training. I was listening all. I uh, I love uh, the leadership, the personality of David because you know we all want to learn from the people that have success and they know what you need to do to become successful. My question for mm -hmm. you is: Are you ready? 
uh, are you ready to listen this knowledge, the skills and everything, and then make it yours and put it in practice? Because everything comes to investment. You invest your time to listen to great leaders, great speakers that they share all their secrets to success. They share their experience with you, but it's not that you just look. And David also said it, it's not just you come today and look, but it's actually taking it at home, copy and paste, put it in practice to have results because you know that once you have results, your confidence goes up. Once you have results, uh, uh, your, your energy goes up, your, your process to success, it's beautiful. And sometimes it's also painful, but hey, I always say obstacles will make you, will break you, but hey, even more important, will shape you. So which kind of person do you really want to become? Because I, I heard the training of David and can you imagine in 30 minutes, he just shared with you some of the key, uh, 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 important keys that could bring you to success. But uh, did you listen 100%? Uh, did you took notes? Are you willing to do 100% what he said? Because I will tell you, when I started at 18 years old in this, uh, in this industry, network marketing, uh, I started thanks to my brother. He invited me to a presentation and I told my brother, I'm going to become in the next five years a professional. I don't do it as a hobby. I don't, uh, I, I want to do it as a business. And I saw that a lot of people, they just want to listen and to start something, but they don't really copy everything 100%. What they do, they only copy and they bring home the things they like. But you know what will bring the results in your business? The things that you don't like to do. Going out of your comfort zone, doing things that you don't want to do because that will shape you, will make you stronger, wiser. And actually, you will become better and better and better. So David talk about the uh, passions, about shyness uh, uh, and the speci spirituality uh, of becoming wealthy, rich. Call it the way you want. And uh, uh, I love the concept that he has about speaking uh, the future. Speaking, actually, the future will help you in the present right now. Are you talking? Who do you want to become? What do you want to achieve? Visualization, imagination. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, he dropped some bombs. And I hope that you can really bring them and, and do whatever it's necessary to do to get, to, do to get results. Because... I, when I started in this industry, I remember I was 18 years old. I was young. I started with my brother. I started to have some, some results immediately in the industry. But if you don't know me, I am Italian. I speak six languages. I don't talk six languages. I don't speak six languages perfectly because, um, yeah, I was, I was good at school, but not much. I learned the languages by doing the business. And I always say better six languages than, uh, and not, anyone perfect than one language and talking perfect but my ambition the discipline the hunger for success and if i talk to you about a little bit my my past when i was uh, uh, in my childhood i come from an immigrant family my mother and my father went to another country some people say the american dream they found the italian dream uh, my father came uh, walking for three weeks so i'm i'm a, a daughter and i'm a, a child of an immigrant family, of a father that walked his way to, to the dream and risked his life shooting, uh, uh, swimming, uh, dogs running after him. And I don't want to get emotional about it because honestly, knowing that it made me more stronger. I remember when my father said, we are not like the other children. Uh, I came here in this country to give you a better future. And I started to study. I started to work at 15 years old as a waitress, going to school. And while my colleagues and my ch the other children were going to party, I didn't have time for that. I was just working, going to school because I felt like the sacrifices of my parents had to be worth it. And I felt like my mother and my father, I want to make them proud. So when I started in network marketing, I told Julian, my brother, Julian Chimbala, hey, I'm going to become a professional. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm hungry for success. And I told him, I will do whatever it takes. I will copy and paste 100% what the leaders are doing. So you need to make a decision. David also said it, and all the people, I'm pretty sure in the training, you need to learn the skills. You can't do this business if you don't learn the skills. I knew up front that I need to learn the skills. And you need the third thing to be coachable. You need to be become 
humble because the door of network marketing is very large but it's very low when you don't go low to enter in this door you can't have success because you will not you maybe you come into it but you will go also out so if you are not willing to become humble and learn from the people that are teaching you when your ego is too big you will not achieve success and um one of my talents is always i speak about the shortcut to success what is this shortcut to success it's actually simple you can learn by mistakes or by, from your mentor if you learn by mistakes mistakes cost time time it's money and you can learn the second way shortcut to success from your mentors and you don't need anymore to do the mistakes because you learn from them you copy and paste 100 percent what they are doing things you like things you hate a lot of people they want to be mentored coach but you know what they are not willing to put the for the, the power the working force they are not willing to listen 100 percent i remember my mentor you know what he told me i'm coaching the team a if you are not willing to be in this team a you are going in another team in, in team d e f but will not be coached by me so all you do it 100 percent. you do whatever it takes in my team a oh i don't mentor you anymore so crying difficult times i was 18 i had no credibility with julian uh, young people were not believing in us we start to go to cold people to cold market the way you call it and i will get there i will get there what means recruiting and the power of recruiting and the mindset but first of all i want to tell you that we all need to do the same things. There are no secrets to success. It's a process you need to follow. It's step by steps. It's putting the work in. And actually, I always say, there is no secret to success. There is not things, impossible things you need to do or crazy things. Are simple things you need to do day by day. That's how you get successful. And of course, we all start uh, in this industry because we have a big why. I never asked. I, I never ask how. I always thought this is my why. Show me the way because when you have a why, the way, the 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 how will appear, and uh, that's my mindset. And I'm a, uh, I, I I'm a mother of two children right now. When I started in this industry, it was me myself and I. I had no children. I had no bills to pay. I was working as a waitress. I told I start in network marketing because I want to make an extra income. I want to make the same amount of money that I make as a waitress. And I told them I want to make like 800 euro a month. When I make that, then I leave my job and I will go to school and I will do the, the diploma. And then when I finished the school, I told them, you know what? I don't go to university because going to university will teach me how to work for someone else. But I will get the best diploma in life the diploma of network marketing. And once you can do it, you can do it the second time. Once you can do it two, two times, you can do it third times. I, I'm Italian, I'm passionate, I have energy, I like to work. Work don't scare me, I love working. I embrace this process. I love people that have vision. I love to work with visionary leadership. And especially I love to be with people. And you know, my mindset is no matter which challenges you have, come challenges because will make me better, wiser and stronger. Once you understand this process, once you have this mindset, you, you will be unstoppable and limitless because a lot of people say, yeah, but I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of that. Afraid is okay. But don't forget that how can you become a big leader if you cannot even embrace the challenges and solve uh, uh, problems? I know people, they always have problems, but I always say come with solutions. So David Imunit, yeah, I love his, uh, his, he spoke about the right mentality and about his convention, about his book. I love it because once you have the right mindset, the right mentality, and you practice, hey, because he said it is not only the mindset, but you also need to put the work in and the, and the practice, then you are ready for it. So today I want to talk to you about something very important. It's about the mindset, the mindset of entrepreneur because network marketing the way i talk to people everyone wants to start and not because i'm andre chimbala millionaire and a, a millennial and i have a lot of results and a lot of money i can tell you that i can go with a bag plastic bag on me without the beautiful brandy clothes it's my attitude it's my energy it's my belief it's my confidence it's my focus it's my discipline is that that creates uh, the confidence in you and 
how you talk to people, the way you look at them. So the way I talk to people, everyone wants to start. You know why? Because I talk about being an entrepreneur. Network marketing, no matter the company you are doing, it's being an entrepreneur. And if you are an entrepreneur, you need to know that you need to bring, bring value on the market. And the beauty is that we do network marketing. It's a funny way to be an entrepreneur. No matter the continent, no matter the religion, no matter the background, no matter your personality, no matter who you were, but who you want to become. So I'm telling you, become an entrepreneur, it's powerful. And if you will be an entrepreneur that opens a business, you would have a loan with the bank and would maybe become uh, 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 your business actually will be your job. And your business will be actually maintaining the bank and pay the costs and everything. But if I would open a restaurant, for example, and I would be an entrepreneur, I would work day and night, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Okay. So when you have this mentality and this mindset for your business in network marketing, your business will change. It's because we treat it still as a hobby. As a part-time, we don't take it seriously. We don't think big. We don't play big. When you start to treat this business as a business, will make you money as a business. And I don't need to go impatient. You know, I, I think like David, I mean, going to Hawaii and then I'm like, what am I doing here? Because once your business, your vision becomes your passion, I do what I'm passionate about. So my business became my hobby. I always tell maybe I will be one day 80 years old on stage impacting thousands of life of people because network marketing is not perfect, but it's a better way like Eric Vore always says. And I will tell you something. Network marketing, it's a bigger industry than the acting, music, sport industry. We have more than 300 billion turnover for network marketing yearly basis. Can you imagine that? When I go to fashion shows of Dolce Gabbana, Versace, when I go to the Grand Prix, I meet important people. That's the benefit, ladies and gentlemen, to become wealthy. I start to be invited to events as a network marketing representing our industry. And I'm proud. I walk with my head up because I say, I'm representing the network marketing industry. In the day of today, our industry is changing. In this COVID period, it was an explosion because people want to become an entrepreneur and work online from home. And our industry is way bigger. So when I meet singers like Maluma, and I can make you a, a, a big list, and when I meet a Max Verstappen from Formula One, when I meet a Usain Bolt in the Hublot uh, 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 show, I, I, I feel proud. I feel proud. When I'm, I will meet the singer, I will say, can you imagine people pay to meet you? You give them fun. But I make money because I help other people to become entrepreneurs and make money. And my industry is way bigger than sport, music, and ending, uh, acting industry. And I tell them, if I would have been, if I, would, uh, if I wanted to become an actor or um, a sport person, uh, successful in sport, when I would have become, when I want to become a singer, I could never make it. Because the only way to become rich in the day of today is with those industry or be a criminal. That's the also honest truth. Or you need to have an heredity. Rich parents. I didn't have any one of them. I cannot sing. I cannot be an actress. I cannot run. I'm small. I'm 150. I'm 160. So I'm very small. So the only way for me was network marketing to become an entrepreneur and a wealthy, rich millionaire and i'm not afraid to say that you don't need to be afraid to say that because it's possible once people reach it it's possible the power of recruiting ladies and gentlemen i see a lot of people they want to become leaders they want in their company they want to become a, 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 a great uh, leader they want to become a great person they, but how can you become a person and a great leader if you don't lead by example and you don't bring the Phase one, the first, how do we say, the first working power that is recruiting. And I will tell you a secret that will help you to recruit. You know what helps me? I don't sell. I share with the people. I share the opportunity. I inform people. I motivate people. I inspire people. And then it's up to them to do what they want. I don't sell. I inform them, I motivate it, I inspire them, and they will tell me if they want to join. And making decision is so important because 
I see a lot of people, they think, yeah, but I don't know with who I talk. Because today we talk about recruiting, no? I don't know with who I talk. I already talk with the, with the, with the people I know. I, I'm afraid to go with people that I don't know. I don't know who to talk. My mind says this, when you believe, and I love, and my advice always go to conventions, especially David, yes, three days, when you believe in your industry, in your company, in your leadership, in you, in the system that your company is having, you will share the opportunity with everyone, with every single human being. So that's my secret to success. I speak with everyone. I don't think about who is that one. I don't prejudge. I think this is an opportunity for everyone. Network marketing is the opportunity for everyone. And then I talk with them. I inform them. I motivate them. I inspire them. Of course, I make the right questions. And that's my invite for you today. Learn the skills, ladies and gentlemen. Learn the skills from your leadership. Learn the skills from the conventions where there are powerful leaders. Learn the skills from people that know how to do it. Learn the skills from your leadership. Become coachable. Make the decision. With this, we can all help you. The leaders, the leadership can help you with all of this, but I cannot help you with recruiting because that's your own contact. I can teach you how to do it, but then still you need to do it. I always make this example. If you have a beautiful car and I give it a beautiful car to you, it's your vehicle. You need to drive it. No matter how good is the car, you need to drive that car. So don't forget that the company you have is the vehicle, but you need to drive that ve vehicle. It's you. It's your attitude. It's your energy. It's your mindset. It's your focus. It's your discipline. It's your consistency. It's your persistence. It's your work. It's your vision. It's your mission. And some people are telling me, Andrea, how can I present my company? There is a simple system that I'm using no matter the company, no matter who you are. It's show the plan, follow up, work with the willing. Three steps, ladies and gentlemen. And this helped me in all these uh, years of career. Show the plan, follow up, work with the willing. Showing the plan, it's easy. It's the opportunity you have. What do you do? You put videos. You share the, uh, the products or the services your company is having. With the right attitude, ladies and gentlemen, the right energy, that's very important. It's your attitude that will determine your altitude. So very important. You inform the people about your, uh, your opportunity. Then you motivate them with your story. Don't forget that. Your story. If you open to them, they will open to you. You motivate them how they can start and what's in it for them. And then you inspire them. You need to take notes about this. You need to inspire them with your vision and the vision of the company. So information, motivation, inspiration. That's important. So show the plan. Follow up. How do you do the follow up? Are you doing the right follow up? Are you learning the skill how to do the follow up? Are you doing it in the first 48 hours? As like David Bonite said, you need to learn the skills. And there are conventions, there are people, there are events that can teach you about that. And follow up, it's so important because in the follow up is the fortune. So I see a lot of people doing the mistake in the follow up. It's easy to, 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 to show, show the plan, but then they don't know how to follow up. So I can have a great presentation, I can close the deal, but then I don't do the right, the right follow up. So the person will stay passive. They will not become active. I want active people in my business. So I will make the right questions like, what, why are you, what are your expectations from this business? What do you want to achieve in how long time? You need to make the right question that you can help them. And you tell them, I will help you to reach this. That's my first focus, help you to achieve what you want. And then you need to work with the willing. Uh, these are trainings of ours, but sometimes, you know, are the simple things that have an impression and an impact and are the ones that help us. But work with the willing. With who, In who are you investing your time, ladies and gentlemen? In who? In people that support you, believe in you. They, uh, uh, they help you to become a better version of yourself and they believe in what you're doing or what are you... Staying with people that don't believe in what you are doing. Your friends are saying, why do you want to achieve success? Why do you want to become so rich? Why do you want to become successful? It's not for you. I had those kind of people near me, like at the beginning in my career. 
And you know what I did? I cleaned up immediately. I told them, for a year, I will take a break from you. I will go with people that believe in what I'm doing, that they support in what, who I want to become, and they help me and they empower me to become a better version of myself. Because being like anyone else, I didn't want that. If you want to become someone, surround yourself with people that empower you and they believe in you. Because I will tell you something. You believing in you and having people that believe in you and support you, it's priceless. You cannot buy it. So go with people that can really believe in what you are doing and especially in you. I saw that there is nothing more powerful in the life of people that that I, that someone can tell them, I believe in you, you can do it. And sometimes it's that pa person, is that saying, is that quote that will make you to become the person that you want to become, become the one destined to be. If I would not have those people around me, my mentors, my coaches, my friends, people that believe in me, I would not be here today because working is easy. Uh, putting in the, for, the, the, wor the work power, it's easy, but having people that believe in you, it's not easy to find them. That's why I say surround yourself with the right people. Who are the five people you surround yourself with? Because it's not one, it's not two, it's five. Five people that you need to surround that will impact your mindset, your life, your uh, everything. Those five people will impact everything that you want it or not. So what can I tell you today? Recruiting, I was just talking in a call for, for my community, for my team. Recruiting is everything. I can help you with, with the skills. I can help you with knowledge. I can help you with system. I can help you with edification. I can help you with anything. But I cannot help you to uh, put the work power that is actually recruiting because that's uh, what we do in our in our business. But when you understood my mindset, that when you believe in what you are doing, you share it with it, everybody, it will be easy. I don't recruit anymore. I just share. I don't sell anymore. I just share. I share what I'm doing. And more you speak out loud, more energy, more passion will you, you you will develop in yourself. I saw it in the last day. I talked so much about my opportunity, about how I like about my industry, about my company, about my team, that all the passion, the energy, the love came out. More you talk about it, more it will come out. And that's my advice for you. And what can I tell you? You need to believe. When you don't believe in the company, when you don't believe in the industry, when you don't believe in what you are doing, when you don't believe in yourself, it will be hard. It will really be hard. So um, my advice for, for you right now is just make a clear vision. Who do you want to become? There is a process that you need to get there. There is a, uh, there is a hard work you need to do to, to, do to get there. Uh, it's a process of transformation that you need to embrace and you need to love. A lot of people I see, oh, I, I'm afraid. I don't know what will, will happen. And I have a lot of difficulties. Yeah, be ready. That's part of the process. Well, I told you, obstacles will make you, will break you. But the most important will shape you. So will make the person that you want to become. And how can you become a big leader when you don't know how to lead by example? Do the phase one, uh, uh, overcome obstacles, having breakthrough. How can you do that? So train your mindset and put it in practice. I Like David said, the most of the time he is training his mindset because when you have the right mindset, the right thoughts in your mind, it will speak into reality, in your behavior, in an attitude. And learn the skills. That's the all what I can tell. Because there are opportunities, there are conventions, and there are books, there are leadership that will leaders that will teach you the skills. Are you willing to learn? Are you ready to pay the price? Are you willing to put into the practice? Because that's all about. And um, I told you, I share just experience. I never talk out of books. I love books. I love uh, to hear from other leaders. But what is my true talent? I always speak out of experience, out of my uh, career, out of my uh, out of. Out of Andrea Cimbala, you know, because at the end of the day, it's not the theory, it's the practice. And if I can take you by the hand and I can help you to achieve success, and remember, when you get some, the first results, the confidence and the excitement and your credibility will go up. Just don't give up. Don't just, I see a lot of people, they just give up. Uh, if you know Zig Ziglar, he makes always an example about the water pump. They just stop before that little push when the water comes out. If you maybe you are there busy months 
uh, years and you are busy with pushing, but hey, when you are prepared and you have the opportunity, success will come. But just be there and do it and do it and do it. But David said, work, work, work. And that's what I say. Do it and do it and do it. Become better, wiser, and stronger with the day. And working, working, you need to have a passion for working. If you are not passionate about working, it will be difficult. And yes, me and my business partner, Igor Emanuel Alberts, like uh, uh, Charles said and introduced us, yeah, we are a multimillionaire. We are the number one in the business forum. But this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. I was just sharing with you, uh, with uh, with Igor, in the when I started at 18 years old in the industry, some of the top leaders that are now as top 20 income earners were not even there. What has happened in our industry in the last three years is amazing. I see top income earner that three years ago they had no success. But you know what? I will tell you good news. There is time for the next three years. And what is going to happen in three next three years, you can be the one. You can be the one if you just do whatever it takes. In the next three years, we will create create so many multimillionaires in our industry network marketing that it will be incredible. I look forward. To, I see it coming. I, I see it coming. I was talking. We will not have only one million income earners a month. We will have five million income earners. You know why? Because our industry has changed. It's playing to a higher level. People love to become an entrepreneur. And this COVID, honestly, they just opened the mind of the people, the mindset that you need to become an entrepreneur if you want to overcome crisis. In time of crisis, you can sell tissues or you can buy tissues. You can cry and buy tissues or you can sell the tissues. And my advice for you, get ready, become an entrepreneur and sell tissues. Make from crisis your opportunity and get ready to become the one destined to be. Make the decision to become a rising upcoming star in our industry and impact the world. Not only on, on a local on a small level, only your company. Start playing big in the industry that the people know your name, that the people in the next 10, 20, 50 years will talk about those leaders that impacted millions of lives with network marketing. And that's my mission, bringing our industry to a higher level, not only my company, not, but the industry. And I always think about who do I want to become what do I want to leave? Which kind of legacy? How do I want that people talk about me in the next years? And that's what keeps me inspired, fired up, sharing the opportunity with everyone every day. And when your business becomes your hobby and your passion, and when you have clear vision, that passion will come out. You will see uh, you are ready to rock and roll and to go. So Charles, I give it back to you because I can talk for hours, but for today, it's enough for the people because you can go right now to work. It's still early. I think you are one hour earlier. I love your continent. I love your culture. Get, culture. Get ready to make an impact on your continent, ladies and gentlemen. There is so much potential. So much potential. Uh, potential. I don't know who is looking from where around the world, but I know that the Africa is looking the continent. Your continent has gold. But start having the right mindset and become that legend, become that leader that will bring your continent to another level. You need to think big now. You need to think, play big, think big, act big, because it's your time, okay? So Charles, I give it back to you. I think you are there, I don't know. Thanks for all the people listening. I am fired up, I have another meeting right now. Awesome. So Next 30 minutes. I came from a meeting. Now this meeting, and now I have another meeting. That's me. I told you I love working. I love what I'm doing. I love to contribute, give value, give power because energy and attitude will determine your altitude and your success. So, are you ready? Are you ready to become the one destined to be? Thank you, Charles. And let also me in the chats, in the comments, in write me what what value did you brought home and let's play big awesome awesome i i didn't expect less from you andre you've you've bust the room you just cut out everywhere <laughs> you threw the bomb and everywhere is hot yeah. someone, said, someone said who is this lady this lady is energetic she's full of fire talking in the jungle i am ready to hunt that's our <laughs> 
don't hunt someone, they will hunt you. So <laughs> I am already the gazelle. I decided I'm the leopard today and I will I will run because that's my passion, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that will be your passion too. And you want to change people's life and you want to change the future of your family and you are willing to make do whatever it takes and pay the price because it's worth it. Let me to tell you, it's worth it. And when you are prepared and when you do it, success will come to you. But get ready, prepare daily, be ready. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And thank you very much for closing this three days recruiting challenge in an amazing way. Uh, we're super excited and grateful for what you're doing in the industry and the support you're giving to everyone. Guys, you want to follow her on Instagram, follow her on social media. She's an amazing person to follow. Her excitement will, 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 what was it? What is it called? It's, her excitement is contagious, guys. <laughs> I you with me. So <laughs> thank you, Charles. I leave it, I give it back to you. I will go yes. out to the room. And for all the people watching, take your time and watch this because you need it. I believe in you. You can do it. If I can do it and everyone can do it, you can be the next one. Just make that decision. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mwah. Awesome. Guys. Thank you very much, Andre, for that powerful nugget. I want to thank all the speakers, all the trainers for coming up here to share these amazing tips to help us go all out to recruit and become a professional in this business. I hope you got value so far for the past three days. You've heard from these guys. These are people who are doing the talk, not just talking the talk. They are doing it. I know results don't lie. Well, that's one thing I learned from Bob Proto. Results don't lie. Whatever you are having, whatever results you are having in your business is a reflection of what you are doing in the business. If you are complaining that your company, that your upline, no, it's a reflection of what you're doing in your business so result don't lie take your time and check what you're doing are you practicing those things you have learned those are the things you want to ask yourself how much are you doing how consistent are you in doing the activity that will help you have results in your business so this is this is great great i'm super excited to have you all without you this event will not be successful so thank you to all the speakers Rick Eaton, uh, Matt Morris, uh, John Mukoro, Kwabena, um, Itoro, you know, then um, Andre, we have Andre, we have so many amazing speakers that came up for the past uh, three days. We have David Monitier, you know, these are, these are great people in the profession. We have them all for three days. We've been listening to them. We have Beth Asin Nekane. We have, you know, How Omar. You know, we have Sandrine. I'm not missing anyone here. These are top leaders doing well in their business. Awesome leaders. Awesome training, I mean. So what you need, go and follow these guys on social media. See what they are doing. Learn from their energy. Learn from the activity. The more you practice what successful people you are doing, the more successful you become. If you are here to get my book, this book will help you grow in your business. It's called Disrupt How to Become Highly Successful in Network Marketing. It comes with a workbook. If you've not gotten it yet, go get it. Go on Amazon. It's there on Amazon. If you're in Nigeria, inbox me. I'll tell you how to get it. If you are in Zambia, you are in South Africa, Into you Apple are. Mart. Yes. You can get it through Apple Mart, through Kwabena. You know, you can get it through. Uh, you can go to. I have people I can 
connect you with you can get the books from in ghana in south africa in kenya you know in cameroon go get the book learn from it learn from it so thank you very much for everyone for being part of this event wait or without without you will not be here so thank you very much so i want to say bye to everyone have a wonderful evening morning afternoon make sure you go crush your goal go all out and build your business so bye